What's up, baby? Back in this thing again for another review. This is Q's Insight. I'm Kelly, and today we're here to talk about Ahsoka Season 1, Episode 7. All right? Now, if you've been to this channel before, you already know we do it. We started off with the premise, three favorite scenes, the gray, and then we home. Who the next one? Right again, so this is Ahsoka season one, episode seven, bro. So, um, in this episode, uh, in a way, we kind of pick up where we left off, right? Um, so we see, uh, that Ahsoka is still headed towards where, um, Shin, um, well, we're, we're Ahsoka, uh, Ahsoka is heading to where Thrawn is, okay? And we all know that everybody's over there, like Thrawn, um, you know, uh, uh, Morgan, Baylin, um, you know, everybody. So, anyways, Ahsoka's on her way there. We see her actually training, and um, as she's training, we see her um, listening to a, um, a, a recorded dialogue, like a recorded video, where in which there's 20 of them, so... Um, but this is a um, recorded video by Anakin Skywalker. So it's basically just telling like Ahsoka for that time, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you're going to run into this and that and this and that. You got to be focused for this and that and this and that. And even though, you know, the time is different right now and, it, you know, even Ahsoka herself is different the message is still the same, you know what I'm saying? So like these, these are like real important um, things that, you know, for Ahsoka to be able to go back to, you know what I'm saying? And then also she can share that with her, her Padawan, which would be Sabine, right? But these things are, are, are gonna probably, we're probably gonna see more of these videos as this, as the season goes on, um, like into season two, or just like into like some of the movies or whatever, right? But anyways, um, come to find out that she's arrived um, to where the planet is. So they come out of hyperspace on the whales and in the inside of the well. And while they come out of hyperspace, we see that Thrawn has actually um, right outside of the pocket of the planet that they're on put a big wall of mines, you know what I'm saying? So once the wells came out of the, um, you know, um, hyperspeed, like they instantly just got bombarded with a whole bunch of mines and they're, they're freaking out, they're going crazy. So they hit hyperspeed again. And then Ahsoka and her ship with Hu Yang hits hyperspeed and hits the planet. But then they did it like, like Thrawn, Thrawn was real calculated with everything. We already know he's a calculated like dude, but he was real calculated with the way he did that because it made sure that um like Ahsoka couldn't like you like get out. Like it just it just it just dude dude is like ten steps ahead, you know what I'm saying? And it really shows in the show. And it, I mean just um uh, I mean it always shows, but you know, it's it's cool to see that from the books, from the uh anime uh show, from to the uh live action show, probably even to the live action movie, you know what I'm saying? Like we're seeing dude and he's promising throughout, you know what I'm saying? Like it ain't just, he ain't just this way here and this way there. No, he's like this way throughout the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's something cool. But anyways, um, so um, once they come down um, onto the planet, um, Thrawn basically uh, gets the uh, the Night Mothers, whatever you want to say, bro, they are, but gets them to um, uh, pinpoint Ahsoka's uh, location since she's landed on the planet. And then from that, um, 
like, you know, they, they, they're basically gonna, they're, they're gonna invade on her. So he sends ships out and stuff like that to her, towards her. Um, and then we also see um, her end up running into Balin, okay? Now, while this is all happening, at the same time, we still have the, the rest of what's going on, which is, you know, Sabine, Ezra, um, and Shen, um, and they end up getting into a, uh, a battle with these stormtroopers, however, I mean, I guess they're stormtroopers still, right? Even though they're under Thrawn's uh, rule, right? But they end up getting into it with the, with the stormtroopers, um, but they really do handle business. Um, now, it gets to a certain point where Ezra and, and, and Sabine could kind of use some help. And just lo and behold, Ahsoka is able to escape Balin and then able to head towards them and then able to help um, Sabine and Ezra out right before, you know, things could have got, you know, a little dicey, you know what I'm saying? So, um, after, you know, handling the situation at hand, Ahsoka, Ezra, and Sabine are all staring and standing um, against... <coughs> I think is it was it Shin? Yeah, uh, yeah, against Shin, right? Um, Ahsoka's like, look, like you know, surrender your weapon, I can help you out. Shorty doesn't trust her, but um so she turns around and starts running. Being as good as Soka is, she tells Ezra and Sabine, like, let her go, you know what I'm saying? Like, let her go. So they do that. And it's only fair because Balin did the same thing for you know, uh, Sabine, pretty much. And he kept his word and everything like that, right? So, um, after after that, um, we see that, like, Thrawn, he was also trying to uh, transmit some some type of, like, I don't know if, I don't know if it was a transmission or if it was like a, a cargo load or, or like a, or like a fleet of, of warriors, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what it was exactly, but while Ahsoka and Sabim and Ezra were fighting against um, his his remnant soldiers or whatever you want to say, right? He was able to download this, whatever it was, and it was an important thing. And it basically said he he says that time is now on our side. You know, Ahsoka won the battle on the floor. But that was a small interaction. The whole big thing, the whole big plot is what I just did. And because she was, you know, sidelined and didn't, you know, see what we was doing, like now we got time on our side and no lo and, she, and no longer is time on her side. You feel me? So I don't, I, I, I kind of missed like what exactly what he was talking about. Like I said, I don't know if it was a transmission. I don't know if it was a fleet of warriors. I don't know if it was, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what it was, but. He did trans transmit something, right? And it's something that's going to be devastating towards, towards, uh, you know, our uh, Ahsoka and everybody, right? <coughs> we also see that uh, Hera has to go in front of the the uh, like Mon Mothma, etc., right? And when she does this, um, you know, it's it's this uh I don't know, it's the uh he has like longer hair, it's some it's some Asian cat, bro. But dude is dude is dude is really like tries to stick it to her like all the time, like, you know, just oh like you ain't you ain't obeying the rules and da 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 like you just really ain't listening type stuff, right? So we all know there's a reason why she's doing all this like, you know, um sneaky stuff you know what i'm saying and, and it's, it's for the benefit of the good side it's for the benefit of the um of the republic right so um but they of course you know if you ain't following the rules certain people ain't gonna see you as like doing something that's 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 uh tremendously good for the cause they're gonna see that's something negative so 
But uh, being that Ma Mothma, like, you know what I'm saying? She kind of was the same, kind of cut from the same cloth as, you know, Hera and everything like that, as far as like doing whatever you need to do to um, make sure that the good side wins, you know what I'm saying? And even if we have to go under the, the radar of, you know, your higher ups, because they don't want you to do this mission or they don't want you to search for this or da 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 still doing it you know what i'm saying because it's for the benefit of the cost and you know mission complete and then you know you show it to the higher ups and they're like dang like we should let you do that it's like yeah exactly so um but she's able to clear her name due to the fact that uh c3po comes to visit sorry my foot is itching c3po comes to visit right and then he ends up um telling mon mothma etc the board you know what i'm saying hey you know we sent uh, Hera and, and, you know, these few other individuals to go over here and handle this situation. So, um, you know, don't, 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 don't crap them. Don't crap on them too much. You know what I'm saying? They were only following our orders, even though you weren't aware of it. We told them to do so. And we all know that that's a lie. But at the same time, it can become the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if you really think about it, it can become the truth, right? By the end of the day, it, you know, they they didn't have no permission to go. But at least Leia snuck her, uh, uh, stuck her neck out for them, you know what I'm saying? Like, when they came down to it, um, in order for them not to get, in order for the, her not to lose her ranking as general and just, you know, just whatever else, you know what I'm saying? Just to get whatever they can on their side so that way when they need more, you know, uh, ammunition, whether it's, uh, you know, you know, um, warriors or, or or food or just whatever you know what i'm saying whatever they need they'll be able to get it um so that was basically all all of these things are happening like simultaneously as well so but we end the episode like i said um with with balin and shin heading back to where thron is thron transmitting a, a message or whatever it may be right which gives him time and takes time away from Ahsoka is what he says. Um, we also have Ezra, Sabine, and Ahsoka all together again, um, um, basically about to leave, come home, right? Or or try to uh, stop Thrawn, figure out what he's doing, right? Um, and then Thrawn, like I said, transmitting the the message or whatever. So that's 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 basically the whole episode, man. Um, I'm going to say three of my favorite scenes. Uh, this may be spoilers. This may be out of, but this may also be out of order. Um, no, this will be spoilers and this may be out of order. If you guys haven't seen the episode and it will bother you to know anything that's maybe uh, considered spoilers, pause the video, come back later. If it doesn't bother you or if you already seen the episode and you already know what I'm talking about, then you already know what I'm talking about. You feel me? Stay tuned. So three of my favorite scenes. Um, I would I would have to say you know the battle with Ezra and Sabine side by side fighting against the remnant soldiers of Thrawn you feel me um, you know seeing Sabine you know you know dual lasers you feel me dual laser pistols um, with the lightsaber sometime with some of the weapons you know rocket launcher at hand you feel me um, and and um, you know, with the with the combat skills as well, you know what I'm saying? Mandalorian, why not? Um, and then also seeing Ezra not having no lightsaber or nothing like that at the time, just using the force, you know what I'm saying? Like really willing him um, throughout any situation that he, he had encountered with the soldiers. Like he would, you know, combat, whatever it may be, or force push, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it may be, but he was able to hold his own and he didn't even have like his main weapon. You know, the Jedi's weapon is... Jedi or Sif's weapon, you know, it, yeah, it's the Force, but also it's the, it's the, it's the, you know, it's the lightsaber. So without him having that, you know, what I'm saying, you thinking he's toast, or it just ain't gonna really be able to do too much. But he was able to do a lot, so that was cool to see those two uh, handling their situation, right? So that would be my uh, first favorite scene. My second favorite scene uh, would be the the battle between uh, Balan and Ahsoka, right? Um, no, it wasn't like the most remarkable battle or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I, I, I like to see, um, the, their lightsaber play. You know what I'm saying? I like to see it's like, it's more realistic. Um, and you know, these are just two OGs, you know what I'm saying? Like Balin, 
I don't know too much about his his backing. You know, what I'm saying not too much of us really know too much about his backing except for what was told in the in the in the seasons thus far. But like, it just seems like you know he is definitely OG. He is up there with Ahsoka, no matter what, right? Um, and then you know, just seeing Ahsoka do her thing as well. You know, what I'm saying that's that's this this is it's called Ahsoka. That's what we here for. You know, what I'm saying so. Um, anytime I see her battle, anytime I see her do a lightsaber duel with somebody, you know what I'm saying? That's probably going to be one of my favorite scenes. But, um, like I said, it wasn't nothing stupid. It wasn't nothing like, um, uh, 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 tremendously, you know, exquisitely done with the lightsaber battle. But I just, you know, I respect it. So that would be my second favorite scene. So my third favorite scene now, um, let's see. I think we're going to have to go with basically, man, like, I'm gonna have to say the ending of seeing like Ahsoka, Sabine, and Ezra all reunited again, you know what I'm saying? About to head home together, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, you know, mission accomplished. For, for for what they know of, you know what I'm saying? They don't, they, don't, they don't know nothing about the throne, what he had just did, but mission accomplished for what had just happened, you feel me? Um, so yeah, that was that was real dope to see. Um, um, see them all, you know what I'm saying, back together, you know? Really dope to see. Um, so that'll be three of my favorite scenes. Uh, the grade for this episode, it wasn't my favorite episode, um, but the episode was, it was, it was, it was, it was what it was. It was cool. You know what I'm saying? I, I definitely think it was worth the time. Um, I'm going to give this episode a 7.5. Three out of 10. All right. So 7.3 out of 10, definitely above average, definitely worth your time. If you guys have been in tune with this season of Ahsoka, of course, you're going to want to watch episode seven because at least episode eight, but also episode seven wasn't that bad. Um, you know, especially being able to see Ezra in action, you know, just just the, the elements that was in that was that was uh, particular to this episode. It was it was good enough, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, it wasn't my favorite episode, but I did enjoy myself. So 7.3 out of 10. Um, if you guys saw the episode, let me know some of your favorite scenes. Uh, thus far out of this season, what's been your favorite episode? Are you looking forward to season eight? Which is, I'm sorry, season eight. God. <laughs> Are you looking forward to episode eight, which is the season finale? Um, you know what I'm saying? Because I definitely am. Or do you wish that there were just more episodes in general? You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I definitely wish so. Um, this, 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 uh, this show has definitely showed me that. Like I said, all these other haters out here, they hating whatever. It's cool, but this show has definitely shown me that Star Wars is back on track and um, is changing and um, could possibly change in, the, in a better way. You know what I'm saying? Um, in a way that we wanted to change. Um, but yeah, that's it, man. Uh, please remember to uh, like, subscribe, and share. As always, this is Q's Insight. I'm Kali. Until next time.